Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and of course, it's Tuesday, so on Tuesdays, we go through channeled material. Now, normally, I'm on camera, but I am recording this episode during Mercury Retrograde, even though this is going to air on the 26th of September, so is technically not Mercury Retrograde anymore. I am doing a lot of uh, pre-recording because I have a lot of deep dives that I'm also working on at the same time, and plus I've got a lot of upcoming shows on other platforms, which um, there's a big platform that I'm going to become a part of, which I will give you guys more information about that soon. But because of that, I am pre-recording all of a lot of stuff during Mercury Retrograde to be released later um, due to my schedule. And so because it's Mercury Retrograde, or at least I'm blaming it on Mercury Retrograde, my camera is having a hard time uh, doing the visuals this morning. So we're just going to do this in uh, vocal and audio form and podcast form. Um, I hope you guys don't mind. But because God works in mysterious ways, uh, looking ahead of the material we're going to cover today, we are going to be talking about the chakra system, which again, and we've talked about a lot on this channel, but this does give me an opportunity with no video to put up uh, more pictures for you guys regarding the chakra system to kind of help you if you are watching this and not just listening to it. So of course, right now we are going through the channeled work of Tom Kenyon and Wendy Kennedy um, entitled The Great Human Potential, Walking in One's Own Light, Teachings from the Palladians and the Hathors. So uh, currently, we're looking at some of the channel material from the Palladians. And of course, as always, if you are new to this channel, you just clicked on because of the title. I am so excited that you're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I do give my commentary on this material. Um, I do read everything from the material on the video. So if you cannot afford to purchase the material yourself, then no fear, I'm going through it all word for word. But as always, I do prefer that each of you have your own copy. Um, following the leader, taking people's word for it has not served us well in the past, in the history of humanity. And so I encourage each and every one of you to get your own copy and come up with your own opinions and your own conclusions. So with that being said, we are starting on page 43 in the section titled, Letting Go of Major Issues, Persecution. So we're gonna read this before we get into the chakra system. Um, I do believe in my personal opinion that currently in our, our collective consciousness, we do have this uh, victim mentality which is not serving us, right? And I'm not saying, yes, of course, we have been victims of things. Yes, of course, there, there has absolutely been a um, nefarious group that has definitely put us in a bad, bad situation, but part of being a victim and taking your power back is refusing to continue to be the victim. And so I'm really glad that they're going to be going over the section of persecution. So let's go ahead and get started. So again, this is page 43, letting go of major issues, persecution. This is a big issue for you all. There have been many, many lifetimes where you have faced persecution for being different, voicing your opinion, for your skin color, for all your beliefs, and everything in between. Again, it comes down to judgment. Many of you have a tendency to shut down your center of speech because you are afraid that using your voice will cause you pain possibly even leading to death as it did in other lifetimes. For some, death was a welcome relief as you felt so isolated that you cut yourself off from your heart center and source. Wow, that's heavy. I have definitely, definitely experienced persecution in this lifetime for this channel. Um, as you guys know, I've gotten many death threats um, from the church, from Christians, uh, sadly. Well, I guess it's it's not... It's typical because we know that Christianity is actually a death cult. It's Mithraism. Um, and there have been some really scary uh, death threats that I've received that I've had to deal with. But it hasn't shut me up. It hasn't stopped me. I'm going to keep going. Um, I do believe that many of us were, uh, were burned at the stake 
in uh, other lifetimes because of, of speaking our truths and, 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 and putting out um, our opinions. And, you know, that's the biggest censorship of all, right? The biggest censorship of all is to, is to put to death someone who has a different opinion than you do. That is super censorship, right? And so I encourage each of you, I, I know it's hard, it's hard to stand up for yourself. Um, I read something recently that that's a sign of trauma um, when you feel like you have a hard time communicating your, your beliefs because you will, you, you've been punished for that in the past. And there have been times in my life, especially um, in my 20s, coming out of an extremely abusive high school, extremely abusive private school I went to, where um, I did try to speak up. I did try to, to inform my caretakers that uh, there was incredible abuse happening. And every time I spoke up, I got punished for it, right? And so it took me a long time to do my own healing, to regain my voice back. And, um, and I've been very vocal on my channel about the abuse that my school, the, the private school that I went to, did to us, um, did to all of us. And they are facing at this point, I'm 40 years old, so 22 years later, that school, that private elite school is now going through a lot of legal battles because of, of child abuse. So, um, so keep speaking up. Keep doing it. It takes courage. It takes bravery. But your voice matters. Your voice counts. All right, let's, let's keep going. Many of you will also carry guilt, shame, pain, and persecution from your lifetimes in Atlantis. And we know, we've said this before, that right now, all of us on the earth right now are um, karmically here because we were also here for the fall of Atlantis. And what's happening right now, from what we understand, um, is that we are actually mirroring the fall of Atlantis. Atlantis fell because the negative side won. And hopefully this go around will have a different outcome. So, so yeah, there could be a lot of underlying trauma and stress within your psyche because of your past experiences in Atlantis. During that period, there was a great deal of judgment by the light against the dark and the dark against the light. Many felt the burden of responsibility that was not theirs to claim for the downfall of Atlantis. It was, in reality, collectively decided that Atlantis was not to survive. It would be a trial run from the process you are going through at this time on your planet. So I just said that. So that confirms other channelings that this is mirroring what happened in Atlantis. And isn't that interesting, guys? So I'm going to read that one sentence again. During that period, there was a great deal of judgment by the light against the dark and the dark against the light. And I have said that so many times over these last couple of years. We have to stop with the judgment. We have to stop judging every single fucking actor in Hollywood just because they're actors. That is so bad, you guys. Stop it. Do not judge someone unless you actually have evidence of wrongdoing. In pictures, with someone covering their eye is not evidence of wrongdoing. It is not illegal. It is not a crime to cover your eye. Stop it. You are going to cause us to fall again if you don't get your shit together. And we know, we know that our community of light, that there are many, 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 many infiltrators from the dark side that are trying to put you in a state of judgment, in a state of vigilante violence. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You are not helping the light. If you're out there judging people because they go and watch movies or because they look into, listen to rock and roll music, if you're judging people for that, you, my friend, are not on the side of light. You are a puppet, a tool, a sheep for the darkness. You're doing exactly what the darkness wants you to do. Stop it. Have grace, have humility, have compassion for other people. All right, let's continue. Atlantis was the last civilization in which you experienced a similar level of spirituality and technology on this planet. As we said, it was in essence a trial run for the time period you as souls knew would come. You created scenarios that would be similar to those you would be experiencing now. It gave you an opportunity to practice integration. Remember, we mentioned earlier that we are moving through a band of photonic energy that supports you 
in accessing higher wisdom and knowledge. And that was a previous uh, reading that we did. So for those who are new, I will be placing the playlist down in the description box below under show notes if you want to go back and listen to that section. Atlantis did not have the benefit of these energies such as you do now, which makes the process of integration a bit easier. In duality, as a result of the limited perspective of separation, beings will try to destroy anything in opposition. There is a belief that in order to survive, anything that is different must be extinguished. It becomes light against dark, right against wrong. Here and now, in this time and space, you are shifting this belief to see that both can coexist. You are operating under the laws of attraction and reflection. In order for you to share experience, you must be resonating at the same frequency. If you are holding your viewpoint in fear, another will attack you for it. You are sure to draw in the attack. But if you hold the understanding that what you pulse out, you get back, and you pulse out the belief that it is safe for you and all others to experience their beliefs, you will see in your reflected reality a safe environment for expression. All of the records of all your past, present, and future lifetimes are stored in your energetic field right now. You are holographic in nature, which means what happens to one aspect of you happens to all the aspects of you. We talked about this earlier, but let's go a bit further. You are literally light that is being projected onto a medium. You can call it a matrix or the web of life if you wish. This now moment is the point of projection on which you perceive yourself to currently physically exist. As you make a change in any one of your lifetimes, not only does the change show up in the energetic field of that of the other lifetime, but it also shows up in your energetic field. As you make a change in this now moment, the change registers in your energetic field as well as the energetic field of all other lifetimes. This is one method of healing that you employ, allowing for a greater healing across lifetimes and timelines. And that is because, as we know, as we've spoken about many times on this channel and on Aquarius Rising Africa, we see time as past, present, and future on a linear graph, but time is actually not linear. It is reciprocal. So every past life, what we call a past life or a future life, is all being lived and experienced at the same moment in time, our minds, our human minds in this third density world just can't process that. All right, let's give you an example. Say you have a fear of abandonment that you played out in another life and you were unable to integrate it. In an effort to try to resolve it again through a new life and in a new way, you recreate this issue for yourself in the now. The now is the only place where it can be altered, as this is where your focus is, where your physical body is. Not only have you created the issue of abandonment in that layer of your energetic field relating to this body and this existence, but you also carry the frequency of abandonment in the energetic layer of your field related to past lives. As you activate an abandoned frequency in the now, it begins to vibrate anywhere you are carrying that frequency in your field. This is the law of resonance and action. And with that being said, yes. So let's, let's take this from the perspective of our third density minds where we do see things as past lives. That's already happened, even though it's happening at the same time. But in our minds, we see it as the past. And I've said this before. And I do understand that for a lot of people, especially people who are coming out of the Christian organization, um, especially people who are new to spirituality and they're reading the missing books of the Bible where Yeshua or Jesus actually does speak about reincarnation, I understand that that can be new and exciting. Like, oh my God, I've never considered the fact that I was actually alive during this time or that time. Wow, that makes sense as to why I'm attracted to certain time periods and have a sense of familiarity with certain time periods. So I do get that. In the beginning, it's alluring and it's fun and it's, it's cool and it's exciting. However, what tends to happen is that our minds... Um, my teacher, one of my original teachers, used to, David Grieg, used to call it the artful dodger. We, our minds, our human minds will do anything it can to escape the reality of our own pain, our own shadow work. 
And so when we're talking about past lives, I notice, especially in my job outside of YouTube, working with individuals um, privately off camera, I've noticed this for a while now, that people that become obsessed with their past lives, all that's happening is they're using their past lives as an escape. They're trying to escape whatever pain, whatever suffering, whatever shadow work they have to do in this life they're trying to get out of doing that by focusing on a past life, by escaping to a past existence. They're also blaming um, insecurities, any type of lower vibrational um, issues that we all have them. Every single person on this, on this earth has them, but they start to, they become the victim, right? They blame these issues, the jealousy, the anger, the abandonment, the betrayal. They blame it on a past existence and leave it as such. That's not helping anyone. So what they just said, what the Palladians just said in this paragraph is basically everything that I've said to you guys. If you study, if you if you're studying spirituality and you're studying yourself and you're trying to heal yourself, if there's an issue you have, like if you have a betrayal issue, a jealousy issue, um, an anger issue, and you think it's coming from a past life, okay, that's fine. But you're in this life now. You're conscious, oh, consciously aware of this life now. So in order to heal that issue, you have to heal it in the now. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you an example of something kind of stupid that I, I struggle with. So this is just a very basic um, fear that I have. It's kind of comical. And I'll give you guys an example of what I'm talking about through this very basic fear I have. So I, as you guys know, I'm a huge animal rights activist, but I am deathly deathly afraid of rats. I have a very visceral reaction to rats. For example, when I, one time I was in South Africa in my 20s and a somebody pulled a box out and it, they opened the box up from storage and a big fucking rat ran across the floor and I passed out. I literally just fainted. I passed out. When I lived in London or any time that I'm up in New York or any type of underground subway situation, uh, the MARTA here in Atlanta, which I don't take MARTA that often, only really to the airport here in Atlanta, I cannot stand uh, to wait for the train. I cannot stand at the edge of the platform like most people do because if I were to look down, because there's always rodents, right, running around the tracks. If I were to look down, I would literally pass out. So when I am in an in a underground situation or a subway situation, I have to stand towards the back so that I don't see the rodents. Like I know that about myself, that my fear of, of rats are so visceral that I will not, I will lose control and I will pass out. So I know that about myself. Now with that being said, I, there's no time in this life as me as Bryce, there's no point in my life where I would have had an experience with a rat in a detrimental way. I grew up in a very nice home, very clean home, I've always lived in cities, so I've always been around rodents, but I, there's just no explanation. And I've had this visceral fear of rodents as early as I can remember as a child. I just cannot, I can't even look at them because they, they scare me so much. I have such a reaction. With that being said, my fear, I don't want them to be killed. Like if there is a rat in the area, I want it to be caught by somebody else, not by me. I can't do the catching and then released. I don't want it to be killed. Even though I'm afraid of it, I don't want it killed. So basically, this fear is most likely coming from another life. Um, I've been told by a healer that most likely what happened is I was tortured to death and some life by rats. They would put sometimes put people into dungeons and just have the rats eat them to death, eat them alive. So that's probably what happened, something like that in a past existence that I'm carrying over in this existence. But regardless, it doesn't even it doesn't even matter. Like regardless, it doesn't even matter because I'm not in that life now. I'm Bryce now. So my my process has been literally to I, I try to look at pictures of rats sometimes. I try to like really slowly start to integrate. Um, that fear and, and heal that fear and bring that fear to the light, if that makes sense. But I'm not even worried about what happened in the past, right? It's, it's, it's literally me as Bryce dealing with it now. So I hope that makes sense. All right, let's go on. 
If you have a room of tuning forks and you strike one that resonates at the note of A, all the other A tuning forks will also begin to vibrate, increasing the volume. The same thing occurs in your energetic field. Often you will notice this is an this is an extreme and an emotional response that seems stronger than what you might logically expect. We would like to help you integrate other aspects of yourselves and see you let go of judgments that you are holding on to from other lifetimes, specifically around persecution and self-expression. This will do energetically as these parts of you still feel isolated from source. As you move into the heart center, you are able to see that you co-created the scenario of abandonment with another. It becomes clear to you that you asked another to don the role of abandoning you so that you could know what that experience was like. You can't play a victim without someone else volunteering to play the perpetrator. When you realize you created the situation, you are able to release judgment and blame. You say, ah, I created that. I was the one who wanted to experience that. So there is no reason to be angry with this person. There is no hurt. They supported me in getting what I want. This new perspective releases your, your charge to abandonment, which becomes integrated into your field. So you see a reaction is created when you have a charged situation and integration is created when there is a change in the perception about the situation. You exist in a dualistic universe. You have light, dark, positive, negative, male, female. You cannot have one without the other. As you co-create, you do so with self, another consciousness, and source. One positive, one negative, and one neutral. This is the true meaning of your holy trinity. Take a nice deep breath. We know that this is a lot to handle for some of you. All right, so that ends the, the chapter on persecution. The next chapter is regaining power through chakras. But before we get to that chapter, I do need to take a brief moment to thank our sponsors of this video, ASEA. Without my sponsorship, this video would not be free. So thank you to the sponsors for allowing my audience to be able to enjoy this work for free. ASEA is an incredible, incredible company. I have truly, truly enjoyed my time with ASEA. I don't know if there will ever be a time in my life when I am without this supplement. So without further ado, here is a brief message from our sponsors. My Uncle Dan used to talk about QTR. QTR meant for him quality time remaining. My Uncle Dan was a very active cyclist and a very avid hiker. And after he retired, after a long career, he decided that he really wanted to make the most of the years he had left where there was quality to his life before the aging process really limited his ability to enjoy things like cycling and hiking. Unfortunately, my Uncle Dan did lose his battle to cancer back in 2019, but when I was first introduced to the ASEA product, all I kept thinking about was my Uncle Dan and his concoction post-retirement of quality time remaining. As human beings, we've been taught that as our body starts to age, we eventually have to start giving up some of the activities that we enjoyed. For my uncle, that was cycling and hiking. With the ASEA supplement, what this product does is it restores signaling back into the body. Signaling, our communication between the cells of the body, is what actually allows the aging process to happen. Your body is designed by nature, by God, whatever you want to call that higher consciousness, it's designed to heal itself. That's why the cells communicate. That's why you have an immune system. But unfortunately, as we become conditioned to the toxins of this world, that immune system and that signaling system start to wear down. When our body loses signaling, that's what causes wrinkles. That's what causes cellulite. That's what causes the hair to gray. And for men, 
that's potentially what causes hair loss. As Dr. Silverman has used as an example, when we are a child and we fall off of our bicycle and skin our knees, our recovery time is pretty quick. This is because we have an abundance of redox or signaling in our bodies. But after puberty and into our adulthood, we rapidly start to lose this signaling. So if we were to fall off a bike at 80, that could mean life or death. Now for me, since I've been on the SIA now for about three months, I have noticed a tremendous amount of energy and endurance restored back to my life. As you guys all know, I am an avid exerciser. I truly believe in the power of a good sweat. And since starting the ASEA, I have noticed that my recovery time between workouts and my endurance within workouts has enhanced immensely. I'm able to go longer and harder. I've also noticed, as many of you guys have commented in the comment section, I feel like I'm getting younger or at least looking younger. No, my age keeps going up, but I look back and compare my videos now to the videos I did when I first started YouTube and I feel like I look younger now than I did then. And I do have to say that is most likely because of the ASEA. When I talked to my mother about this product, I mentioned the quality time remaining that my uncle Dan used to speak of and how with the ASEA for her as a grandmother, this product can give her the potential to have a lot longer quality time of playing in the backyard with her grandchildren. In fact, so many amazing, incredible stories can be found in comment sections of this video and on Asiya's own YouTube channel, which I will place down in the description box below. Now, we can't make any medical claims with this product as it is just a supplement. But from my perspective and from all of the um, perspectives and experiences I've read from you guys, this product has done nothing but enhance every single person's life every single person's quality time remaining, whether that be 50 years or 10 years. We see a lot of people talk about med beds, this idea of med beds. Everybody's waiting for a med bed, but what if I told you, in my opinion, the med bed is already here. With the ASEA, what it comes with, each liquid, it's a liquid, each liquid comes with its own shot glass. The shot glass is about two ounces. Each person is instructed to take between four and eight ounces a day. You take a little shot of the ASEA, you swish it around for 30 to 60 seconds so that you allow the saliva to carry the redox where it wants to carry it, and then you swallow the rest. The redox is so genius, and the creators of this product are so genius that in my opinion they really really honored and respected god's design because you see when you take the liquid redox you are allowing your body its own intelligence because the redox is just a tool it's just the signaling for your cells your cells your body is designed to heal itself and this is what helps the body to continue to heal itself and so when you take the liquid your body Body knows exactly where it needs to send the redox, what part of your body is wounded, what part of your body isn't so stable. And so it sends the redox to that particular area so the cells in that area can start to communicate to get that particular area of the body back to where it needs to be. Now, of course, with this redox gel, you are able to direct the gel wherever you want it to go. So today I woke up and had a little bit of a creak in my neck. So I took the redox gel and I rubbed it on the back of my neck three times within five minutes. I personally, in my experience, automatically started to feel relief. You can also use this as a beauty supplement too. I've been using the gel on my thighs and on my boobs because yes, friends, I am 40 years old and as, as the aging process does occur, the body starts to droop a little bit. And no, I've never had children, so my boobs aren't as droopy as they could be if I had used them to feed a child, but they still are. You know, I got boobs and they, 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 they are, they're starting to sink a little bit. I also have stretch marks on my boobs that I've had my whole life because, you know, they grew. 
at some point when I was a child. So I've been taking the gel and putting them on my chest. And not only have I noticed a difference, but my boyfriend has also noticed a different difference as well. My boyfriend has been putting the gel on his head. As he is in his 50s now, he has started to notice thinning of the hair, as most men do around that age in their lives. And he is starting to grow his hair back which is quite incredible in fact i find myself now when i walk past him putting my hand in his hair just to feel all the hair that's growing back on his head you see my friends your body doesn't want to fail you it wants to keep you going it wants to keep you healthy that is how god designed it and this product is basically the controllers of this world's worst nightmare now, once again, I can't make any medical claims because this product is just a supplement. But from everything I have researched about this product, from all of the people using this product, you really can't go wrong with this product. And because this product uses the intelligence of your body, each individual person is going to start to notice different things occurring with this product. If you are interested in learning more about this product or purchasing this product, Product or even becoming a part of the business of ASEA, please text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to 321-216-8047 and J or Hillis will get back to you as soon as possible. If you are texting from a country outside of the United States, please make sure that you add plus one. 321-216-8047 plus one is our country code. And in your text, on top of texting Bryce info, just make sure you let Jay or Hillis know that you are texting from a country outside the United States so they can arrange a call with you on WhatsApp or Signal or Zoom, any application that's not going to charge you. With that being said, another amazing thing about the SEA company is that they do offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if this product doesn't work for you or isn't what you expected after the first 30 days, they will refund you. All right, back to our show. Okay, back to the channeling, regaining power through chakras. What we would like to do right now are some visualizations and then an activation. They are short but powerful, and you can refer to them at any time. We are doing this in a slightly different order. And just before activation, we are going to weave the chakras together so that they will become connected. We want to get you empowered to express yourself. And that means linking the second chakra of creative energy up through the fifth chakra of physical expression of that creative energy. Many of you have creative ideas, thoughts, or opinions that originate in the second, third, and fourth chakras, but you have a difficult time expressing them in the world through the fifth chakra as the result of persecution. So again, the fifth chakra is the throat. It's in the throat, so that's why they are speaking about the voice, right? That's the voice. The first and seventh we will omit for the purpose of this exercise, but you can include them at a later date if you wish. We are not necessarily working from the bottom to the top with your chakra system. You can do this as you are reading or at another moment. Start by putting your feet flat on the floor. So maybe this is a good, uh, maybe this was an, again a God wink that my video wasn't working today so that you guys can really just listen to what is being said here by the Palladians and not need to necessarily look at the screen. So if you're able to, if you're in a situation right now where you can either stand up or just put your feet on the floor, and I'm gonna go ahead and add my two cents into this, take it or leave it, I'm going to suggest that you do this barefoot. So if you've got shoes on, if you're not at work, or if, if you're at home and you're able to do this or take your shoes off and stand with your feet on the floor, if you're able to go outside and put your feet on the ground, that might be powerful as well. If you're at work right now and you're just listening uh, to this at the moment, maybe bookmark it so that when you go home, you can do this exercise in the privacy of your own home. So if you are at home right now, it, or if you have the ability to do this um, and you want to take my advice, take your shoes off. Um, go and stand outside on the ground 
and see if you can um, just listen to the words and really focus on going inside your body at this moment. So they're going to start with the solar plexus. Uh, this is the third chakra, you guys. So your solar plexus, for those that don't know where that is, if you can just like go inside your body right now, if you're standing up outside with your feet on the ground, bring your mind's eye into that place on your torso, you know where your rib cage is. It's like an upside down V or the top of a mountain where your rib comes up to the sternum. That area that's not with bone, where there is no bone, that little middle bit is your solar plexus. That is Manipura, that's the third chakra. The color is yellow. And this is also your Helios. So this is the sun, the solar plexus. This is where the heat comes out of the body. So you can maybe even touch your solar plexus for a moment and just kind of bring your awareness with your feet planted on the ground, really, really rooting into the ground into that area of the solar plexus. Okay, here we go. This is what the, um, what the, uh, Palladians are going to say now. So that was a note from Bryce as a uh, professional in this in this industry. Now let's hear what the Palladians have to say. So the solar plexus. Envision yourself in a beautiful cocoon of white light. See it infused with a golden hue that represents your soul's essence. This beautiful light grounds and connects you to your body. Now, begin to imagine this beautiful light swirling around you. Begin to see it move in a counterclockwise direction. As you feel this energy begin to stabilize, begin to move the energy all the way through the body, through every cell, through every molecule. Now, coming towards you across the horizon, you see a beautiful golden yellow light. This light is entering through the front and back of your solar plexus, just above the navel. See this beautiful light nourishing your body, healing all of your cells with its luminescence. And as you inhale, it moves deeper into each and every cell of the body. As you exhale, just observe what is released. Is it more light? Is it dark or murky? If it is, it's quite all right. You are simply letting go. Just be observant. Now, this is Bryce again. This is not from the Palladians. This is from Bryce. If you are able to, in this moment, with the inhales and the exhales, only if you are able to do this, if you're at the ability with your breathing practices that you are able to do this, try to only take the inhale and the exhale through your nose. Try to leave your mouth out of it. Mouth breathing can cause stress in the body. The nose, the nostrils, the left nostril is the feminine energy chain. The right nostril is the masculine energy chain. I've talked a lot about nadis on this channel. So nadis are energetic chains of energy that run through the body. You have about 75,000 nadis, but there's only really only one main one that we focus on, but there's actually three that are truly the focus of any spiritual practice. The main one is Shashumna that runs up and down the spine. And then what connects in a major way to Shashumna and to all the chakras that line up through Shashumna is your left and right nostril. Those nadis that swerve through the body that go in and out through the shishumna, the, the masculine and the feminine. Now, if you're, if you're not familiar with pranayama practices, if you're very new to this type of work and you're having trouble breathing clearly through the nose, exhaling and inhaling through the nose, then absolutely at that time use your mouth. That's totally fine in the beginning. But over time, really work to get clear breathing through the nose. This is why so many ancient practices like yoga, like a lot of the Egyptian alchemies and the mystery schools really focus heavily on nostril breathing. Okay, so now we're moving into the sacral area. So the second chakra, this is an orange color. This is around kind of a, a back and around your navel area. So it's right below the third chakra. Now envision a bright orange light coming into the second chakra just below the navel. This beautiful orange light nourishes your creativity. You have a direct connection to source. Move that orange energy through your entire body. See it growing brighter and stronger as you inhale and as you exhale. Observe what energies you are releasing. 
For anybody who has sexual trauma, the second chakra isn't just creativity, it's also your sexuality. So for anybody who has had trauma in that area, um, this is a good one to work on. And don't, and don't expect for any releasing to be comfortable. If you've had trauma in that area, just observe it for what it is and present it up to that light. So now we're moving up to the throat chakra. This is from the Palladians. For this chakra, we want you to envision a beautiful blue light, clear as a blue sky. See this energy pouring in, coming once again across the horizon. See it entering to the front of the throat chakra and into the back of the energetic center. With each breath in, it goes brighter and stronger. You can see riches of color as you exhale, allow all the stress and worry to drift from your body. Just let it go. Um, I'm going to, this is Bryce again speaking to you. If anybody um, listening right now has TMJ or tight jaw, jaw issues, that's another indication of throat chakra issues. So the best thing to do to really work on loosening up the, the jaw is to heal your voice. Okay, let's move to the heart center, which is between the third chakra and the fifth chakra. It's the fourth chakra, Anahata. Um, it also extends out through the lungs and into the arms, the heart center. Okay. For this one, you can choose your color, pink or green. We want you to see that energy coming in and intensifying in the area of your heart center. As you inhale, it goes brighter and stronger. As you exhale, allow yourself to release anything that does not belong to you or no longer serves you. Now our work will be to weave together these chakras. So start to see the beautiful threads of golden energy weaving through your energy centers. You're starting to weave the second chakra. See the golden light moving all the way up to the third chakra, all the way up to the heart center, and then connecting with the throat chakra. See these golden threads weaving once again back down through the throat, through the heart, down through your solar plexus and into your second chakra. Say to yourself out loud, I, your name, have created wisdom within myself. I am divine expression. I have knowledge and wisdom. Today, I stand in my full light, and I now have the strength and clarity of expression. Seeing these threads passing through all the chakras, now we are going to do one last visualization. See a silvery white light moving up through your energetic center. It is very bright and is coming from the core of the earth. This light is moving up through your feet, spinning in a counterclockwise direction. See it coming up through your legs, around your hips, through your abdomen, around your lungs and your throat, going up around the jaw, the temples and the crown of your head. Finally, see this light going out and all the way up and into the celestial rounds to the center of the galaxy. We are going to end with an activation. Say it out loud or to yourself. In this time and in this space, my full power I now embrace. Then envision a white flame at your feet going all the way up to the crown of your head. As you inhale, feel yourself completely rooted in your body. Feel yourself strong and energized. Alignments. Since you are perceiving yourself as separate from the source, the part of you that is having this experience is your ego. You have many personalities, many lifetimes, many egos, and each one thinks that it is separate, but it is really part of the whole. What you are doing right now is removing this layer, this barrier of belief that somehow you are separate. In reality, you are already aligned with self 
and source. When we do exercises to align, we are really helping you to remove these distortions in the energetic field that say you are not. These are simply stories that you tell yourself to play this game. The reason that we are framing it in this way is to give you the awareness that you don't have to do anything other than drop the illusion as your natural divine state is one of alignment. When you work with tone and sound, you are creating these beautiful vibrations and interfacing patterns for some of the lower resonating thoughts and beliefs about yourself that you are constantly projecting out. When you start to work with sound, it helps to ground vibration into the body so that you can feel them, so that they become palpable. It is much more effective for you because it becomes tangible for the mind. If it is up there, it doesn't exist. If it is down here, something that you can see or feel, it must be real. Sorry to tell you, it is all just a big illusion. Whether it is in your head or projected out into your world, it is all the same. An illusion and a projection. It is just easier for the third dimensional self to think that you are aligning yourself, but what you are doing is removing distortions. It is a subtle difference, but makes a difference in your body. And it responds to the signals that you send. If you send the message that you are in perfect alignment, your body will follow that. If you say, I'm out of alignment, I'm broken, I have to fix this or that, you just create more distortions. It seems really obvious when we say it this way, but when you walk through life on a day-to-day -day basis, the subtle frequencies begin to add up and create more dramatic results. Recalibration. Recalibration is simply working with the distortions, the lower belief forms that keep you from seeing your own divine nature. Tone helps you to discover where you are vibrating. If you are never aware of where you are vibrating, then you are just blindly going along. Once you know where you are vibrating, you can make decisions, recalibrate, and shift your frequencies much faster to direct your creations. By creating a tone and holding it, you become far more aware of your body as you begin to vibrate. The tone is literally resounding in your entire body. If you want to play with this, you will find you may notice a lower tone more deeply resonating in the body chamber. If you generate a tone with a strong intention of creation, such as health and vitality, you can give instructions to your cells with that tone. The cells know exactly what they need to do, what the frequency is, and they begin to match it. With the law of entrainment, all frequencies wish to synchronize. If you have a strong higher frequency and a weak lower frequency, the lower one will naturally increase to match that of the higher. The natural flow of life is always towards source. It is about connection and reintegration. It takes a lot more energy to be in fear, be unhappy, or be judgmental than to be joyful, expansive, or happy. In fact, being unhappy is exhausting. As long as you can be mindful about how you are feeling, the universe will support you in going towards joy. You are headed back up in frequency, so the natural flow is going in the same direction. To recap, the recalibration you can do anytime. It's a wonderful way for you to start to listen to your body and see what it is telling you. We have given you some examples as to what you can focus on, but you can really do that for anything you want. When you make a tone with a clear, strong intention, you are sending the signals out to the cells. Any that are misaligned or experiencing distortions will increase their vibrations to match the resonance of that tone. Because it is a physical resonance, you believe that it is more potent than a tone that is slightly generated at a mental level. Take a deep breath. But again, there is no difference. It is all in the mind and how you set it up in your belief system. As you shift into the fifth dimension, you are no longer going to attract in the same way. 
you are simply going to manifest. You think about it, it's there. It becomes child's play. No doubt the third dimension is unique and quite challenging. We honor you greatly for what you are experiencing. You are doing remarkable work and you are teaching the rest of us what compassion and integration means. Integration. Let's continue talking about integration since it's the whole point of the experience. Integration through elimination of judgments. As you go through this process of ascension, you are trying to integrate the aspects of yourself that you have not been able to bring home, if you will, the parts of you that are still perceiving separation. As you forgive yourself for things that you have done in other lifetimes and acknowledge the wonderful things that you have also accomplished in these lives, you are erasing the barriers of separation. By doing so, your full awareness is deposited into your body. The full awareness says, ah, yes, I had this lifetime and that one, and I got to play this role in that role, etc. And this is what I have learned by playing all these roles. This is what I discovered in existence. This is integration. This is why it is so important for you to see where you are vibrating. It allows you to be in the driver's seat and not on automatic pilot. Being conscious of your vibration not only means that you can maneuver through reality with more grace and ease, but also you can dramatically change it by altering your frequency. Experiencing higher frequencies means more potential. Many of you wish to know the details of your past lives so that you can integrate them. You don't have to look at past lives to do this exactly. You don't have to look at past lives to do this. You simply have to look at what's going on in this lifetime. You are not recalling another lifetime to change it. Direct change can only occur in this now moment. Sometimes when you recall a past life, what it will do is give you another perspective about the very same issue or situation that are currently being played out in this life. You might say, ah, I tried it that way and that's how it worked out. And now I am repeating the same pattern. That is completely, completely mirroring what I just said a few minutes ago. It doesn't matter. Your past lives don't matter. What matters is this now moment and how you are integrating the energies now. Not then, but now. Also know there will be many things that you will not recall for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's too traumatic. Sometimes there are just too many details. That can create more confusion for you. So the higher self says, no, never mind that. Let's focus on the now. In fact, a past life is not really past. Nope. It's going on concurrently. As remember, time does not exist. Your mastery of integration can help that lifetime. For example, in that other life, you may have experienced guilt, shame, or blame. So as you learn to integrate those issues, you holographically share the process of how that integration of those issues was done in the other lifetime. This other lifetime has free will just as you do and can then choose to download and apply those lessons, allowing for deeper healing and integration. When we did the Sophia Code, uh, Hathor spoke greatly about this in the Hathor section. I will link that episode down under show notes in the description box below if you want more of a scientific explanation for the co-current lives and how you making the decision to heal now in this now moment is actually healing the past as well, how that happens. And as I'm reading this, there have been moments in my life where I'm just like going about my day and all of a sudden I feel extreme peace. It makes me wonder, is a future life working on itself right now and it's affecting me in this here now moment, right? It's all the same. It's all coming from the same higher self. And here is a small bit of additional information for you. When you learn how to integrate a fear, a guilt, or a blame, you send out this information to all of your genetic line. Absolutely. How about that? That's why you're breaking your family curses in this life. They can choose to receive it and download it for learning purposes, or they can just simply file it away. 
it's interesting my teacher in India often talks about this for those of us who have d dedicated our life like myself I've dedicated this life to healing myself to working on myself to going on the initiates path of spirituality and according to my teacher it that action of me doing this can alter and can heal seven generations below me and seven generations behind me it's a big deal the Palladians now tell you to take a deep breath here is your string theory, let's take a harp. Each string has its own vibration to it, and you are constantly moving back and forth between these strings. What you are actually doing is aligning yourself with a version of the truth that feels the best and matches your current frequency. So every fork in the road, every choice you make can throw you onto a different string. We give you the example of strings on a harp, but in reality, every moment you experience is a single point of focus. You link these moments together to give you the illusion of a timeline or string. All moments are now moments. They are never past or future and are all going on concurrently. As you experience the now, it is based on an agreed upon a set of circumstances at the personal level as well as at the collective level. You choose a point of focus, the version of the now that you want to experience, and project yourself into that moment. There are others who are sharing your now moment as they are aligning with the same agreed upon set of collective circumstances. Some of the shared information will be highlighted in your experience and some of it will not. Let us give you an example. Many on your planet will experience wars and other highly traumatic events directly in their lives. You have agreed to be in the now moment where the collective agreed these events would transpire, but in your personal life, you are choosing to hold another residence. That is why you are not experiencing it directly as part of your day-to-day -day reality. You still choose to be in this now moment as it serves you. Your personal experience does not need to reflect all collective choices in highly dramatic ways. Why are you creating traumatic events on the collective level? because not enough have awakened to change it. When enough of you at an individual level chooses a higher frequency, you can create a template from which the collective can more readily access the information and make adjustments in their own lives. That is exactly what we have been saying on this channel. All of these people in the truther community think that just because they know that these bad nefarious things have been happening is enough to ascend. It doesn't mean anything. What you know, the knowledge that you know, really means nothing when it comes to ascension. What means something when it comes to ascension is your own inner work. That's what they're saying. The only way to ascend, that's why there's so many normies out there, so many people out there that have no idea about what's been going on in the world, and they're more likely to ascend, though, than people who do. Because even though they don't know the facts, they've been working on themselves. You guys, I know you guys get this. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but it just, it just, it's so, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Once you understand this, you can't not understand it. And it starts to become a lot of these, you know, these truther channels, which are really just drama channels. They, they, um, they become like ridiculous because it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. Okay, let's go back to the Palladians. We know it's a bit hard for the mind to get, but that is the whole point of the mind. It's supposed to filter things out. The more you increase your vibration, the more you will begin to understand this. You don't really have to know what you are moving from focus point to focus point or now moment to now moment. Just know that you are moving forward and that you are choosing your potential as you advance. The choice, that's, that's their density. The law of one states that we're in a density of choice. Are you choosing to just sit around and gossip? about celebrities and the nefarious players? Or are you taking that information, understanding what's going on, understanding how powerful you are, and choosing to vibrationally heal yourself so that hopefully the collective does the same and then we move out of this shithole called Earth, right? Makes sense. That's why you're the storm. That's why you are the storm. You are the white hat. You. It's your choice. And now this, the past is just as flexible as the future. You can shift your experience. Take a deep breath. Now we know what some of you are thinking right now. Hmm, 
if this is all an illusion, it doesn't really exist, maybe I can just deny a situation and it will eventually be released. Sorry to say, but that doesn't quite work that way. That is the thought of exclusion, which is at the base of fearful. So yes, you can't escape. As I just said, you have to know what's, like, wait, we figure out what's going on. We see, we understand, we, we register, and then we take, take away from that the choice to heal ourselves, to change our vibration. And as Shanti says, let's look at it this way. And they talked about vibrations. So what the nefarious people of this world do is very, very low vibration. Right, So if we don't heal our own lower vibrations, if we ignore our fears, if we ignore our jealousy and our betrayal, what you resist will persist and will go stronger. So because we collectively as a whole have all these wounds, have these betrayal, judgment, abandonment, all these wounds that we refuse to work on or we, we become the victim and we blame somebody else for them, that is why the nefarious players, the controllers, have been able to thrive. Because that vibrational frequency of fear, anger, guilt, that vibrational frequency matches the vibrational frequency of the controllers. So we know we, they do those things, and they will have to be held accountable. That's karma. That's cause and effect for what they've done. But in order to completely stop this from happening, Let's say we arrested all of the nefarious players in the world, the bad guys. We arrested them all. They were sent to prison or whatever. They're off. They're out of civilization. They're not in civilization anymore. If we don't heal ourselves, if we don't work on our own shadow side, our own lower vibrations, guess what? Another group of controllers is just going to pop up. It's just going to keep happening. The pattern is going to keep repeating itself until we decide to change the pattern. And we can only change the pattern when we change ourselves, when we change our own vibrational frequency. If we all collectively decided to heal our wounds, heal our anger, heal, heal our, our betrayal, all of those these issues, our abandonment issues, if we collectively decided to do that, then these issues don't have power anymore. And when these issues don't have power anymore, they can't attract a group of nefarious players. I hope that makes sense. I hope, I hope, I hope that makes sense. All right. Focusing on a positive aspect of something because you want to avoid the negative will actually generate more of a negativity quality because that is what you judge. And that is the toxic positivity. And I've done a video on toxic positivity before. I will link that down in show notes in the description box below. We see a lot of toxic positivity in the fake spiritual world. People who have not done near enough work on, their, on themselves, they'll come on these platforms and they'll claim to be like teachers or all these healers, all these kinds of things, and they haven't spent enough time really being a student. And so they get confused and they, they, they um, get into this toxic positivity. Okay. And, um, and that's, that's, they're, they're correct. What you resist will persist. What, requ what it requires is integration. Not experiencing the vibration of what you like to deny doesn't mean that it's not there. It simply means that your focus isn't on it. You just have your back turned to it, but the judgment about it still exists. You have to include and accept it. The whole purpose of the experience is to integrate. As multidimensional beings, you incarnate into many different dimensions at the same time. Remember, this is an illusion. Past, present, and future are one. Right now, you may choose to focus your awareness on the lives in one particular dimension, such as 3D, but there are aspects of you, say, sixth or eighth dimensional experiences as well. You are not regulated to the bottom of the dimensional hierarchy to work your way up. Again, you are part of source energy. Again, so yeah, the hierarchy thing we've spoken about many times, we spoke about it this last week. Hierarchy is a negative aspect. So, we're all part of the source energy. That's the social memory complex. Again, you are part of source energy, and there are aspects of you having every possible experience. Now, could this lifetime be enough to integrate all aspects of yourself? You will not get to all of them, but you will get to many of them, enough to increase your frequency to cross the dimensional barrier. Remember, it is not over because you shift. 
There is still more to explore and integrate in the higher realms. We've said it before, enjoy where you are. The main premise of this game was that you were to forget. You honored that premise. Now you are working through the heart instead of the mind. The mind kept you separate and the heart allows you to experience connection. So as you change your vibrational range to a higher frequency and you start spending more time in the operating system of the heart, the veil simply lifts. You cannot run both systems at the same time, but you can go back and forth. You can say this lifetime is the one that will benefit the most from integration because this is the life that is attempting to shift into the higher realms. This requires you to release all of your judgments. As we mentioned earlier, you are at the end of a grand cycle and you are moving through a dense band of photonic energy. As you end one cycle and begin the next, this photonic band supports you with the waves of fresh energy. These high frequency light particles support your quest to obtain higher frequencies. As a result, your lower ones will get triggered. It's all part of the process. Rewriting contracts and vows. So now we would like to give you a simple affirmation to rewrite some of those contracts or vows that no longer serve your higher purpose. Repeat several times out loud. I, your name, renounce, revoke, and recall any vows, promises, and contracts that are no longer in alignment with my highest good. I now revoke, renounce, recall any promises and contracts that keep me from connecting to source energy and expressing my divine self. And so it is. This is something that you can continue to reaffirm from time to time because you do establish a few new contracts as you go. You are only dissolving the contracts that are no longer in alignment with your highest good. Don't worry. Those that you have put into place and want to keep will not be altered. Besides, your higher self knows what to do with it all.